Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and in today's video, we'll learn about a powerful Linux tool called IP Tables, which is used to create a quick and powerful firewall for your system. IP Table provide an interface to work with packet filtering framework of Linux kernel called NetFilter. In very simple terms, it is a powerful tool to manage network packets coming to and going out of your system. So with IP table, you can block or accept or take other actions on network traffic based on different user defined conditions. We will discuss what these conditions are and all the possible actions that IP table supports in detail in this video. It's been quite a while that I created one of these advanced Linux tutorials. So if you like today's video and want more such videos, kindly write that in the comment box. Alright, so let's start today's video. Alright, now for the sake of keeping things simple and understandable, I'm going to make two videos on this topic. In the first video, I'm going to cover the basic concepts of IP tables. And then in the second video, we'll look at the exact usage, command syntax and some live demo on IP tables. So make sure you subscribe to XPS Tech channel to get the second part of this video. Alright, now when we talk about IP table, it is very important that we should understand three terms. These three terms are tables, chains and rules. Now, if you understand these three terms well, it would be very easy to use this tool. So let's look at each of these terms one by one. First is table. Now, IP table consists of five tables out of which three are main tables and each table has different roles. Now the first is the filter table. Now this is the default and the main table used in IP table. That means whenever you don't mention any specific table, the rule will apply to filter table. Now as the name suggests, the role of this table is of filtering packet. That is to make decisions about whether to let a packet continue to its intended destination or to deny its request. This is the table that provides majority of function of IP tables and for most occasions, this is the table that you would be dealing with. Second is the NAT table. Now, as the name suggests, this table is used to provide network address translation rules. Now, the rules in this table will determine whether to modify and how to modify the packet source or destination addresses in order to route the packet in NAT setup where direct access is not possible. Now third is the mangle table. Now this table is used to alter the IP headers of the packet. For instance, you can adjust the time to live TTL value of the packet, either lengthening or shortening the number of valid network hops that the packet can sustain. Now other IP headers can be altered in similar ways. So these were the three main tables. The other two are raw and security table. Both these tables have just one function each. Raw table is basically used for connection tracking. It provides a mechanism for marking packets to view packets as a part of an ongoing connection or session. Security table is used to set internal SE Linux security context marks on packets, which will affect how SE Linux or other system that can interpret SE Linux security context handle these packets. But as I said, these are not the main tables and you do not have to worry much about these two tables. All right, so that was all about the tables. Next is chains. Now chains are like points in the route of a packet where you can apply rules. There are five chains in IP table. They are pre-routing, input, forward, output and post routing. Now all chains are not available for all tables. Each chain gives you option to take action on the packet at that particular point in the packet route. Now let's get a more clear picture of all the chains. Now pre-routing chain is applied to any incoming packet very soon after entering the network stack. This chain is processed before any routing decision have been made regarding where to send the packet. Next input chain is a point post pre-routing when packet enters the system. Forward chain is applied to a packet that is forwarded through your system and output chain is applied to the packet originated from your system and going out. Finally, post routing is opposite of pre routing. This is applied to outgoing or forwarded traffic after routing decision has taken place and just before packet is being put on the wire. Alright, so these were all the five chains. Now, as I mentioned earlier, not all chains are available for all tables. 
So first we should know which chain is available for which table. Apart from that, we should also know the order in which chain is called for each table and also chain traversal order. Now this figure shows you the order in which chain is called for different table and also the availability of chain for each table. So for filter table, you have three chains input, forward and output. Our next is the chain traversal order, which is actually the path how the packet traverses. So for incoming packets to the local system, the traversal order is pre-routing and then input. For incoming packet that is forwarded to another host, traversal order is pre-routing, forward and post-routing. And finally for locally generated packets, the traversal order is output and post-routing. Alright, so now we have covered tables and chains. The last thing left is IP table rules. Now rules are nothing but user defined commands to manipulate the network traffic. Now as each chain is called, the packet will be checked against each rule within the chain in order. If the packet does not match, the next rule in the chain is examined. If it does match, then the next rule is specified by the value of target. Now each rule has basically two component, matching component and a target component. Matching component is different conditions available to define rules. So you can match by protocol type, destination or source address, destination or source port, input or output interface, headers, etc. Now these can be combined to create really complex rule sets. Next is the target component. Now the target component is the action that are triggered when a packet meets the matching criteria of a rule. Now there are two types of target, terminating target and non-terminating target. Now terminating target are basically actions that end the further traversal in that particular chain. Some examples of terminating targets are accept, drop, queue, return or move to any user defined chain. And in non-terminating targets, you perform an action and then continue evaluation within the chain. One thing to note here is that not all action is available for every chain and table. Hence the table and chain type dictates the actions available. Alright, so that was all about the theory of IP tables. I hope this had made some sense and you are now clear with the basic concept of IP table. And if not, don't worry, I'm sure things will become a lot easier in the next video when we'll see the actual usage on a live system. So stay tuned and thank you for watching this video. A huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me and thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.